Hey guys, this is Greg from followgregsports.com and today I'm going to show you an example of how understanding the dynamics of the game and the game you are shooting in particular can make a difference. This is footage from a GoPro camera mounted in the flash shoe of my camera. In this case, I'm shooting using a Nikon D500 with a Sigma 120 to 300 millimeter f2.8 sports lens and using a monopod. Now typically I like to set up behind the goal to capture players running towards me, but due to the fact that this field is fenced and the current COVID restrictions, I needed to shoot from the sidelines through a fence opening. Fortunately, this was around the top of the goal box, which is a fairly ideal position to shoot from because you see the majority of the field play and you see the keeper's face in the near side goal. This sequence was from the second half of the game, so I was able to pick up on tendencies of the gameplay and the way the players were reacting to these situations. As you can see from the start, the gray team's left winger has the ball on the right side of the video. I should point out that I was there to capture the team in blue, and I knew from watching the first half that this winger has a strong left foot, but it did not make sense for me to shoot towards that player at this time. This is for two reasons. First is if I see a tackle from the blue team from this position, it will most likely be the back of their head or body, and that's not really too interesting. And also, I'm shooting at a full 300 millimeters here, and so while I may choose to use my secondary camera, which has my 70 to 200 millimeter on it to capture the action, I would only really do that if it's the blue team's winger running towards me. Now, as the play progresses, you see I'm now locking in on the center back of the blue team. This is because if the winger tries to cross it, will most likely be the center forward and I want to get a shot of the center defender facing me with the ball coming towards him. And I can see right in my right eye, like through the viewfinder, the expression of the center back's face to know the winger did not cross the ball and is heading down the sideline, so I did not fire the shutter. I can also see it because uh, one a uh, good trick that I learned is that I keep my left eye open while my right eye is in the viewfinder, so I can see the winger enter my line of sight with my left eye. Now, once I see that the winger is moving down the field and is going to cross the ball, I immediately point my camera and focus on the keeper. You see that I immediately pull out the focal length to get a little wider so I can see more of the action around the keeper. From earlier in the game, I also know that the gray left winger has a really strong foot. And as I hear him strike the ball and with my camera already focused on the keeper's face, I can see the keeper's expression change and I start shooting off shots. So let's watch the sequence over again and watch when my camera first starts with the center defender and then switches to the keeper. And while not all the shots are quote keepers, pun intended, this is the one I ended up publishing. I hope this was a helpful tip on how to understand the game and the way the current games you are photographing can help you set up for the perfect shot. You can find more tips in my masterclass, Mastering Youth Soccer Photography, or see my work at followgregsports.com.